so with excess uh, excessive profit motive uh, dri driving operations deregulation invited risk taking like higher leverage uh, risk management practices and uh, under pricing of risks so in general uh, when we see these things uh, what what, uh, what happened wrong so it's one about uh, point is about the deregulation globalization lobbying corruption uh, new liberalism uh, greed financial uh, financialization of the economy so this is one example uh, uh, reported by the kabir hassan uh, 2000 uh, in 9 so cause of uh, us subprime mortgage crisis in 2006 the subprime uh, mortgage crisis occurred when banks sold too many mortgages to feed the demand of mortgage bank security sold through the secondary market but here in, in this subprime uh, mortgage crisis really the the issue becomes clear the difference between uh, debt creation and debt based the, the subprime was caused essentially by everybody buying a house because house prices are uh, increasing and buying a house through the financing because the financing is able to immediately throw it on the uh, uh, wholesale market of financing, Bank Bank, Credit Mark, and the institution and investor. So we can throw it immediately. There are funds there and we refinance again so everybody bought two houses every every real estate owner and every worker in a real estate agency in america bought one or two or three houses but they don't need them they are not they bought them because of speculation and because of the easy financing way that allows also that speculative approach then they cannot pay for it of course they cannot pay for it because it's beyond their capacity to pay so they uh, and the debts are already transferred sold several times in the market and reach Lehman brothers and Lehman brother uh, broke why did Lehman brother broke why did Lehman brother broke and it does not make any finance Lehman brother never made any finance it only buys Debt. This bank of banks. So, uh, and, and, and that's I should give up. This is really the difference yes, yes. between direct financing and trading. Yes, real. So you can see that he has mentioned some points like uh, excessive risk is part of that one, interest based financing, short selling, lack, uh, lacks of lending and uh, standard securitization, sale of debt, credit default swaps. But you, you didn't, uh, did you check where did Kabir Hassan do uh, got this? Uh, <laughs> He's just mentioned is in paper. Hmm? This diagram. Yeah, yeah. And I doubt that it is his own doing. <laughs> because usually his habit is to copy from others without <laughs> So I have taken from Kavira. <laughs> yeah, actually, the, the, the real problem is started when the, uh, the mortgage is given to the risky customer on a high interest rate. Is that? Risky customers whose yeah. credit history was already bad, they were given uh, mortgage financing, but on a higher rate. So they have a tendency to default. When they got the mortgages, they start defaulting because they have the credit history. Yeah, and I agree with that. That's you. why the word comes subprime, yeah. not prime yeah. customer, but subprime. Yeah, but subprime doesn't mean risky. It has the other aspect of it that we have no more our standard in accepting financing. So subprime is lower standard in financing. So they, with that, I mean, in, in, in numerous cases, yeah, I should say in probably millions of cases, financing was given at 105% and 110%. And that's what the best time to buy property was. Yeah, <laughs> but, but but everybody became bankrupt within two years. Yeah. Yeah. But, but those, those who have cash, they can buy it and then they are at low price. One day later, when the prices went, the prices went down in some yeah. places, 50 percent. In some places, in California, in most places, except in one uh, city or uh, one neighborhood, it, it went at least 30 percent. And now that 
people have done, they have they have pulled their fund and they start buying the all defaulted houses. But those who were, at, at that time, everybody was bankrupt. So they could not buy anything. Everybody was bankrupt. Who is going to buy when the prices went down? I mean, only those new newly married uh, couples that uh, are starting. Yeah, the starters, yes, were able to get uh, lower prices. But other than uh, and the non-starters were already bankrupt at that time. So, so basically, the sale of debt was the main problem. The sale of debt is the main problem, and uh, I mean, this is obvious from the bankruptcy of Lehman Brothers. Lehman Brothers doesn't only buy debts, doesn't finance it. They look at the sale of cash flows, future cash flows. Yeah, that's also a debt, right? Yeah. What is future cash flow other than debt? Uh, give it another name. Yeah. <laughs> there are there is another name out there. <laughs> How about sale of dementia? How about sale of bonds? Okay. So, Prof, can I ask, can I uh, say something? Yes, yes. For the crisis, uh, I think that uh, loan granting policies another problem that uh, the banks uh, give uh, someone who can't pay. Yes, that's the, that is the lowering of standards of uh, granting loans. Yes, Sammy. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. So we now we move to the for the definitions. Like, what is about the finance? What's finance? Two word financial describes activities related uh, to the supervision or transfer of liquid capital in expect, uh, uh, expectation of future interest, dividend or capital gains. So the financialization, a pattern of accumulation in which profit accrue primarily through financial channels rather than through trade and commodity production. So uh, financialization refers to the in, uh, increasing importance of finance, financial markets and financial uh, institutions in the working of the economy. So all these uh, are aspects of the idea that we are deriving uh, profit from only not from financing real goods and, and, and commodities, but from assets, financial assets only, which are essentially debts. So another example. Except for to prove that are not debts. Okay. So another uh, definition is financial uh, financialization is the growth of the financial sector. It's increased power over the real economy, the explosion in the power of wealth, and the reduction of all of society uh, to the realm of finance. Financial financialization is about the increasing control and power of finance over the productive economy and traditional business. So another uh, definition, last one, financialization means the increasing role of fi uh, financial motives, financial markets, financial actors, and financial institutions in the opera operation of domestic and international economies. So other related terms for the financialization? At one time, I remember in New York, the bonuses given in one of the broker's companies in New York, in one of the years, in the year 2007 or six, okay. around that was bonuses given to brokers who were employees, $115 million in that year for each one. So imagine, they find that the extent of financial 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 financial. Financial. Yeah, yeah. For, for a person like me or you, whose salary is fifty thousand dollars, you are given hundred and fifty million dollar bonus at the end of that. Year. How much with the the profits that the company makes? Yes. That brokerage company was worth. So the other related terms like globalization, neoliberalism, like ideas ideas associated with free market. So capitalism, post-industrialism, marked by a tra uh, transition from manufacturing-based economy to a service-based economy. Post-Fordism, a uh, dominant system of economic production, consumption, and associated uh, socio-economic phenomena in most industrialized countries since la uh, late 20th century. The new economy and activity centered and accumulation center. Sorry, I don't understand the relationship just terms that are used. Terms, 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 basic financialization. Yeah. Basic, these terms are for the yeah. financialization. Yeah. Yes. 
So some feature of uh, feature of financialization, endorsement of the shareholder value uh, principles, upholding and uh, pr prioritizing maximization of stock prices or above all else, dominance of capital markets, over bank based finance, increasing political and economic power of uh, rentier and the function less investor class. So these are the some features of financializations. The explosion of financial trading with new instruments, including controversial derivative tools such as future and option and swap, etc. So another like its line, the research uh, has shown that financialization has increased inequality, showed down investment in real production, and mounted pressure on in uh, indebted households and individuals, and led to decline in the democratic uh, accountability. Uh, professor, I have a question here. Um, last week uh, in another course by Dr. Zarifullah Khan, we were studying two types of capitalism, the shareholder capitalism and stakeholder capitalism. And he was explaining how we are trying to fix the issues now by moving towards stakeholder capitalism, where we are not just concerned with the shareholder, but also other stakeholders. Who is moving this direction? I mean, the West also, they are trying to talk about the climate, and they are having uh, conferences to support. And what we want, we want to move out of capitalism, not to another form of capitalism. Yeah, but, but the, the, the idea in the world was... The, the old statement of uh, Abu Dhabi al Mawdudi, even though you did not hear of this name, Abu Dhabi al Mawdudi, you, no, you, you, we know it's yeah, very famous. Yes. Yeah, very famous. Still famous among the people of the yeah, right? even, even the youngsters, yeah. It's the sea and other things are very famous. But you are in uh, yeah, in his statement, he discussed in one of his books, discussed communism and uh, capitalism. Uh, he said what is needed now, communism is, uh, is ugly and I mean, it is not uh, amenable to reform either. But uh, capitalism can be reformed. We need to reform capitalism. So he he called there, uh, and his call is a call for reforming capitalism. I think it is correct, really. But uh, that reforming of capitalism will take us completely out of it. Because we are introducing elements that uh, are not really acceptable in that capitalist mentality. So, it's more of a really out of it, but yet maintaining the human element that is in capitalism. Because capitalism, after all, is, uh, is not really a, a theoretical system that imposed itself on a human being, it's a development of a human uh, lust and uh, just containing the human lust, the human lust is part of the human life, part of the reality also. It needs only to be contained rather than to be eliminated. And if we contain it then by these amendments that are very important, like in, 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 in incorporating uh, in, a fundamental non-profit Sector also. By that, you, you make a change by uh, eliminating the uh, speculative ways or the ways that do not relate to reality in the profit making. All ways that do not relate to reality in profit making by eliminating this, then we, we maintain that the principle of market economy. Yes, and the Islamic system is definitely. A market economy, but a market economy of a different nature than the capitalist one. I remember during the discussion, uh, you, you, some of you may may have heard that we had in California uh, a governor named Davis, and he was voted down after uh, in the second period of his governorship. He, he was publicly voted down, and instead of him, we elected that. Uh, the uh, wrestler actor, what was my Yeah, that one. Okay, who, who, that was who, who was elected instead of him. But the reason, the discussion during the, the issue of when he was brought down, the discussion was 
that when uh, in the spirit of capitalism, it is okay to raise price and compete. It's okay to monopolize energy. Yeah. Anyone who produces energy should ask for the price that he likes for it. And these were the argument because the issue of enrollment at that time, enrollment, Davis, and these are related issues because he was part of that enrollment monopoly. So this is the, the, the matter. It was hard uh, on TV and in radio and all, all that. That well, this is the spirit of capitalism, uh, and then uh, if, if, if he can monopolize and have higher price, he should have it. Yeah, and why not? That's the normal. That should be changed. If, if this is changed, then then probably you may talk about stakeholder capitalism, but we don't want to like it. Just call it the capitalism. I mean, system. So I think uh, yeah, just by increasing the stakeholders will not solve the issue. If you say that uh, corporate social responsibility or looking after the environment will fix capitalism, this is not sufficient. It's, it's not sufficient. Yeah. Definitely, we need to eliminate interest, to eliminate well, trading debts and buying yeah. eliminating interest, to eliminate trading debt. We need, as she will tell us next uh, in our uh, next uh, Saturday, inshallah. And what kind of reform that that is needed in the financial market? Thank you. Especially keeping the current scenario, the current the the, the, the new scenario as well as the global scenario. The blocks are making, and we have to discuss this financially also. What do you mean by doing that? Means just financial restrictions on one country, and the, the whole game is based on financialization. I think. I mean the sanction out yeah, the, the sanctions. Yes, relate to that. The power of financialization allows you to make sanctions. But if you don't have this power, uh, you probably cannot make even uh, uh, these kind of sanctions. Yes, I, I, I agree with you. But anyway, we need to create the sanctions. So, but have you heard in the news that came repeatedly by several, and then some, some of those who said it apologize for it? These refugees are now grown with, with blue eyes. Yeah. They are not a Iraq or a Iraqi or anything. That, that was the <laughs> part of the ugly picture of, of uh, uh, Western uh, culture. Really ugly. Uh, but these, uh, these restrictions are just kicking out the share from the SIF. These are really threat to the financing system. Yeah, but, but uh, these are the, the chief of the financial system. But uh, in these statements that came by normal people, I mean, by, by a, a broadcaster in, in, in a station. It's, uh, who is a broadcaster in the station? It's not like normal person, it's a normal person. By these normal people to, to have this kind of statement, maybe that is happening. Uh, Anybody can uh, have long uh, hair and uh, uh, blue eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, black eyes, black tears. <laughs> and even, even the people are saying that this is financial atomic bomb used by the Western. The new term, financial atomic bomb. Well, I so hope that the, the third board can get at least the, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, understand this shock. I hope that uh, they can understand this shock. So, in short, uh, on to discover when financialization began, beginning of financialization can be traced back to the 1950s. It was uh, the fall of Britain Woods monetary system in the early 1970s that uh, accelerated growth in global liquidity and prompted uh, a surge of financial liberalization and deregulation. Well, because the seeds of it are in capitalism itself. Yes, yes. The seeds of it are in the issue that you can profit here from debts. Yes, bro. and debts do not uh, generate profit, generate inc yes. in increase in uh, GDP or in any real uh, wealth. But, but, Professor, I think uh, the point here is uh, it's very valid that uh, the fiat system, the, the fiat currency, supports this financialization also because if the money supply is limited or fixed then you cannot play with the money and debt so so easily if, if you have a gold bag or, or any kind of fixed money supply it will not be easy to financialize i don't agree with this do you guys agree 
And if we were still on the gold or uh, silver system, that would not happen. Uh, I think what, what you can probably say is instead of that, not the fiat currency that was it, but rather the, the banking system, because there is a lot more money created in the banking system than the fiat currency. So the fiat currency is what, 3, 4% of the total quantity of money in any economy. So it's really not, that's not the reason then. Fiat plus the fractional reserve. So the idea of reserves, the idea of uh, yeah, money creating, what I think we need to think of is to sail appropriately between freedom and at the same time, don't hurt, so don't make harm to others. But if you don't see between these, these two, if you take an extreme here or there, I think you put in serious trouble. You are going to talk to us uh, about the paper of uh, Askari, right? I'm going to ask that. Hussein mm -hmm. Askari. Yeah. Hussein So, in my opinion, Hussein Askari went to the other extreme, and, and, and those whom you read, yeah, Hassan also went to the other extreme. Because, <laughs> yeah, okay, let me take uh, the team now position. I am a banker. By what virtue, by what right do you limit my right? If uh, uh, he comes and give me a deposit, and then I give a, a financing to him, by what, what by what virtue do you limit my freedom? Creating uh, what they call the arrived uh, deposit current account, so that is creating money. By what virtue can you limit uh, uh, my freedom? I, I didn't do anything wrong. He put with me a deposit. And uh, I have, uh, I am not, uh, uh, I mean, if you want me only to be a cashier for him, he will be charged, the whole society will lose, as a matter of fact. But, and I am not his cashier. And by what virtue can you limit my freedom when he puts somebody with me? And uh, I, I give a financing to the other. So you have no right to make that limitation on me. So uh, I am free, definitely. So I am free, in other words, to create money. You can't tell me that you have to keep it all in your pocket. That would be stupid to, to put all this money in my gold and secretly, okay, yeah. and then charge you and him and everybody fees to maintain this, to feed their needs. I don't need to give up. Why, why the hell? Why the hell is this institution? You don't need this institution then. You keep, you keep your money in your pocket, keep your money uh, with your wife. So why should it, uh, or, or, uh, then, if I am permitted to keep uh, a deposit from him, definitely I'm permitted to give to the other guy uh, a financing, and that creates uh, money. So you take the honor of this is not permissible. Well, why? By what virtue can you limit my freedom? I am free to do that. And suppose I am I, I, I'm not even an institution, I am I'm just have a shop, and someone put this money with, with me, and I used it to give that to the other guy. I am not an institution. Okay? And everybody does that in, in their economy. By what virtue can you prevent it from? I guarantee this money. And he, this man, I got uh, adequate securities and everything when I gave him financing. So uh, it, that balance between economic freedom and that relates to monetary policy to a, a huge extent, uh, between economic freedom and uh, what is better for the economy, what is wrong in the economy. Uh, and creating conditions from your own without evidence that really this is the solution, I think this is not acceptable. And I believe this is the problem of Hussein Hassan in this manner of thinking that oh, the solution is in this the Islamic finance 
is based on 100% uh, reserve. Help me, who said that? <laughs> He said that, all right? And he is definitely on value. Why should who said this? And from that to speak. Basically, the, bank, the definition of banking in all the acts is that to take deposit for the purpose of lending. Yeah. Otherwise, yes, there is no need for banks. No, but, but the people who, like Askari, who argue that they say we don't need banks. I mean, they have a, an alternative investment model for the economy. They don't. They don't. In fact, they don't. They have. Ideas that are unconscious. They have ideas, not a model. But where is the model? Because there is a hegemony of the, the banking system in the world. Well, fine. Yeah. well, that hegemony should be really changed. And I really, now I noticed that especially in Africa. In Africa, uh, bankers, as a small employee in a bank, makes a lot more than the university professor. And make a lot more than a minister in the government either. Yeah, even a minister in the government would make a just go to pay money. You know, they got ministership in, uh, as as an opportunity to get bribes and all that. But uh, uh, the other point is, yes, no banker with with a high school degree only makes more money than a minister. Why? That's yes, there is that hegemony and that uh, that was created by the colonials. They still have that spirit from the colonialist end because they were the educated. Those are the, the ones who also took the government after the, the Britons left or the French left. So you, you see that which is theory. Same thing, sorry, for Pakistan and India and Bangladesh. You still have a lot of the colonialist spirit there that uh, there is a big difference between uh, the salary of an educated person and uh, uh, one who is uh, not of high school and university. So you have big difference in the salary, even in government, where it doesn't, it's not in some other country. But uh, also, also a big difference Syria. whether you speak English or you don't speak English. Yeah, that's, also that's right. Yes. So, uh, yeah, we, uh, we need really to get rid of that uh, colonialist heritage. Yes. Okay. So one thing I want to mention here, uh, data from Sanders and Cornet in. It's called colonial box. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> so you need to come out of yeah. that box. Let's come out. Let's come out. He showed an increase of more than five uh, fold for the total derivatives contracts held by commercial banks in the U.S. between 2000 and 2013, from some of roughly uh, 40 trillion dollars to more than 230 trillion dollars. So it's a footnote actually. Uh, Brother Hassan, I think uh, if you include the data of Muslim countries also, it will be very interesting yes. to see from some of the Muslim countries. Are they any different in terms of the derivatives trading or <coughs> is it the same? Yeah, I think we need uh, the next to focus on some of the some of the, like Malaysia, Turkey. Yes. Uh, Probably Pakistan also. But Pakistan doesn't have very in, in its market, does it? In Pakistan, they don't have very in the market. I mean, uh, finance market, they don't have very good. Well, they they don't have have currency trading. Yes. Yeah. There are no other options. Uh, in Qatar, they were going to uh, uh, introduce them, but they did not yet, to my knowledge. And they were studying it. And it was a promise by the uh, government that we will introduce them to say it's not until yet. So, I mean, most of them, uh, Malaysia and Turkey both have very good. Yeah, I will try to watch. So, uh, another thing. Yeah, very good, especially for Turkey. And unfortunately, now we don't have any really good people. And, uh, and there are more than one issue that uh, need to be done about Turkey here. Uh, uh, like, for instance, Turkey is one of the probably the highest producer of tobacco in the world. And tobacco, uh, oil, and chain from agriculture to cigarettes need to be uh, revamped. And uh, tobacco is harmful. 
and we have recently report a report by a, a company that produces fertilizers. They said they were trying to get their fertilizer on some tobacco product. So I wrote to them, in fact, I told them it's, it's not permissible in Sharia. They are religious people, so they had somebody. So this is haram to, my, uh, to, to sell fertilizers to tobacco agriculture. You, because the, 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 I mean, planting tobacco is haram, it says. All the chain is haram, and we read it, we change, we read in Turkey. And we need someone, I don't think you would be suitable, although you know Turkey's, but uh, no, we need someone who has accessibility, more accessibility to uh, Turkish uh, people and, uh, and get the information, um, uh, some of uh, non published information. Even Ozan, who is working on Al-Qaq in Turkey, and he's not, even with that, he's finding serious difficulty in getting information and getting, you know, this usually hidden information in the bureaucracy. You have a huge bureaucracy in Turkey. But, uh, and maybe Turkey and UK are the worst two countries in bureaucracy in the world. And the reason is because they are old countries and they have the old system. And you, you will see holes here that are still for the last 200 years or 300 years, and they are still there and functioning and uh, and we still people that under them at least. Thank you. Go ahead. So uh, how financial uh, financializations works? It is uh, these points are discussed by the Thomas in 2007. Uh, seven, I think so. So financializations operate through three different channels: uh, changes in the structure and operations of financial markets, changes in the behavior of non-financial corporations, and changes in the economic uh, policy. So. In short, I just uh, want to mention some like changes in the behavior uh, of non-financial corporations like discussed by, sorry, is say I missed one. I it's interesting yes. that many of these companies uh, earn from financing now a lot more than they earn from their own business in, in car industry, car production industry, and in electronic and uh, electrical uh, instruments and all that is, you know, kitchen and all that. They earn from financing a lot more than they earn from their own. And you find that mixture in, in the membership of board of directors. Find bankers, members in the board of directors, so direction is and, and uh, mixed between the finance and these non-finance corporations. So I just want to mention, like uh, Thomas mentioned, these things changes in the structure and uh, operation of financial uh, markets, like some of the earliest work relevant to financial concerns, the effects of changing in the many of financial assets and liabilities. So these are this is the mm -hmm. reference. Microeconomics effect of financial innovation and deregulation, impact of wealth and credit rationing on household consumption, the influence of the stock market on business investment spending, the growth effect of increased in depthness and uh, in depthness increases uh, in the profit share shifts in income away from workers and lower retained profits of corporations. So next is about the like uh, changes in the behavior of non-financial corporations. So financial markets have worked to change uh, so as to align with their interest. Uh, the financial markets have worked to change so to align with their uh, sorry this I think it's repeated. According to this view, financial innovations such as leverage buyers and private equity invest, uh, investing financed by junk bonds are market efficient uh, efficiency improvements that compel managers to satisfy the interest of shareholders who are the owners so this is the part of thomas so is he is also discussed about the changes in the economic policy like it restores policy control over financial markets changes the new liberal economic policy paradigm encouraged by financializations makes corporations responsive to interest of stakeholders other than just financial markets, reforms the political process to uh, diminish, uh, diminish the influence of corporation and wealthy and elites. America is a democracy of dollar, not democracy of human beings. <laughs> it's the dollar that uh, determines that votes. <laughs> So main actors for financializations, uh, in, uh, so investment banks, so commercial banking and retail banking, shadow banking, in institutional uh, investors, institutional cash pools. 
so these are the main actors so another basically these graphs are like uh, is an in part of an empirical study so so financialization effects it is uh, uh, done i think so 2006 uh, uh, so transformation of employment uh, like deindustrialization uh, deindustrialization de you can see the graph uh, the relative industry shares of employment in the us economy uh, from 1952 to 2001 So the deindustrialization in U.S. in half of a century, the labor employed by the manufacturing industry has been reduced to less than half, replaced by services. The next one is about a transformation of economic development. So the deindustrialization in U.S. in about 50 years until 2002, the economy created by the manufacturing industry has been halved. Uh, while gdp from service of fire sector have more than doubled so these graphs are taken from his study financialization in us uh, uh, so transformation of profit these are the facts so financialization in us the service sector that leads the us economy in gdp since 1990 the actual the sector with the smallest share in the uh, in profit pools in 2000s the the leon share goes fire now The is what finance, finance, insurance, insurance, and real estate. Yes, I think. Real estate so. is really finance. You should remember, real estate is completely finance. So mm. it depends on finance. So transformation of earnings. So uh, non-financial companies in the U.S. Uh, as 2000 were earning around an extra. The 40 to 50 percent of their active-based income in financial portfolio returns. So transformation of manufacturing income, the so financialization in uh, the partic uh, particular that manufacturing companies after 2000 have started to earn from their financial portfolio return as much as their main uh, activities. So come on, this one. So it's basically uh, previous one and this one is also part of the. Krippner uh, like uh, empirical study. So distribution of sources from fin financial uh, portfolio you can see in red there uh, is interest. In blue you can see the capital gains and uh, uh, in green you can see the dividends. So it's also fr from uh, data from the 1950 to 2000 uh, in context of US. Non-financial corporations. Well, like the answer to show uh, to how do non-financial companies make money besides their main activities uh, seems a simple through interest with peak ratio as as high as 80 percent. You can see the uh, like interest rate, part of interest like. So the word finance, uh, it, uh, roughly US 60 trillion real sector in 2010, carried a 10 times bigger derivatives market. Around five times bigger foreign currency tra transactions market. You can see from this graph. And this kind of uh, really is, is not normal. It cannot uh, be accepted as normal. And this is why I believe, I personally believe, I have a hunch without a proof yet uh, that this is why we have high poverty in the world, and this is why poverty persists. Because people are not producing food and uh, uh, things that we need to human beings, they are producing uh, uh, rather uh, higher prices for uh, shares. The share that starts at ten thousand dollars now is, uh, but some of them are three thousand dollars and two thousand fifty dollars. At my time, when I started dealing with the Uh, stock market in America, there was no share at all beyond hundred and then four hundred and ten dollars at all. IBM share at that time was only eleven dollars. A friend of mine bought uh, some of the shares and he won eight hundred thousand dollars in them. He made the different multiplying of the shares for buying. When I bought some IBM shares, but then when I bought the house, I sold them and uh, got the house instead. So uh, now you can see another graph related into like the first one in 2008, the new flow of capital from developing to developed countries. 
industries reached over USD 800 billion dollars. The second one, you can see the sub-Saharan African increased. It's like from 2001, it was 35, just 35 billion dollars, and it was become in 2008 163 billion dollars. So you can move like the third one sector in 2000. The reserves accumulation in de developing Asia, excluding China and India, rose from USD like in 2000. It was 113 billion USD dollars, and it became in 2017 320 USD billion dollars. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. You can comparison with the America. It is. It was 2000. It is 800, and Asia was just on to 320. So there is like I want to prove you just if you please put some comments on it. That is the reverse pyramid like in a nutshell, the concept of re reverse pyramid the co uh, is simply implies a relatively smaller real economy basis uh, on top of which are relatively larger I mean, financial. The, the, the pyramid doesn't show the extent of the numbers. Yes, it shows the, 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 the shape. Yes. But the extent of the number really is that yes. the the top layers are a lot more. Yes. So the previous diagram was better. I think the circles was. Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if if you take like one of them, like in this circle, you take the the currency uh, oh. trading, the currency speculation, and compare it with the top layer here. Yes. You yes. find this is a lot smaller yes. relative to yes. the base. Yes, bro. So it should go uh, a lot farther than that. Yes, too. yes. yes. Yeah, I mean, I always give that example. Saddam Hussein was at one time found in a hole, which is an old grave, uh, was hidden in it, and they found him and took him and uh, him. But the day he was found in that hole, uh, the stock market in New York went about down about. 10 to 10 percent. Why? Why? What's that? Why this should affect that? Because see how fragile it is the stock market. That's the point. How fragile it is. Over the last three weeks or four weeks, it went down more than 30 percent also. Uh, again, here, if you remember, uh, 10 days ago, on the day of the uh, Russian invasion, the stock market went down 11 percent. The English lira is declined, and the lira also. <coughs> However, the uh, gold increased. The gold increased for just one round more than uh, 100 English lira. Which is percentage wise, how much? It was before before the war. It was seven hundred. Yes, eight hundred. So about uh, fifteen percent. It's fifteen percent. Why should we? The quantity of gold that is in the market is still the same. Well, nothing to increase. And then actually, and that is really a point. That is because. The economy is fragile. Another diagram you can see uh, the future trading and derivatives composition, like the data from turnover in the future market 1970s, 80s, and 1990s, based on the number of contracts traded, which is reported by the organization, the organized exchange. Like uh, with blue, you can see 1970s, there's a, a huge part of like total agriculture. With yellow, you can see the uh, preci uh, precious metals, and green one is currency, uh, and uh, pink one is energy, and the uh, another one is financial instruments. So you can see uh, apparently from 1970s, it's uh, become bigger. So for future trading in 1970s was basically. Yes. We have created the future market before agriculture. I mean, that's useful. Creating them at the beginning was for to help farmers improve their uh, ability to sell their corn. But, but now we turn them into financial instruments. Yes. So effects on economy during the 2000. 7 to 10 a financial crisis, a number of economists and others began to argue that financial services had become too large 
a sector of economy with no real benefit to society uh, occurring from the activities of increased financializations. The financial sector harms the real economy. The Bru uh, Bruce Bart Bart Bartlett summarized several studies in 2013 article indicating that financialization has adversely affect economic growth and uh, contributes to income inequality and wage stagnation from the middle class. It fun, uh, another one like we create like uh, effects of financialization. We created options, so it's about financialization. Yeah, let's leave it now until we come back from the uh, break. Let's break. take a little break. Yes, and try to come back, please, at eleven fifteen. Don't go. There's no one who wants to smoke now. You don't smoke, right? <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Bro. Thank you for your time. Speak, speak, speak. <laughs> you be doctor, you should speak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what is it? He's saying you should speak like a speech. It's 42 slides. 42? For last, I think so. 12 slides. He said 40. <laughs> Come on, Paul. That's how are you fucking doing? I don't know this is yeah. You bring up the okay. Come on. Take Hey, pick, take my one picture on this slide. Yes. Thank you very much. It is What is the date today? Only uh, zero. Zero. Huh? How much today? March. Okay. Is it? Is to is what is the date? Three five five March. Okay. Yes. March five, five. Yes, okay. I'll put that to sign the letter from. Thank you. 
This is definitely not the side. Okay, so you know, if you can that, you 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 that,
الشيء يقول انا السبب ما عندي زباين ممكن تشرح تقاعدي بالنسبه لي هل في ملاوي هو ماذا فعل الضريبي والغرفه الضريبيه هذا الشيء حرام ولا لا؟ هي لان الملاوي هو الشيء الاول تقاعدي بالنسبه لي في بس هي ثابته في البيت كل شباب لازم يبيع ما حد بس يبيع انا كونسيومر يعني ايش بدي بيع اون لاين؟ لا اذا انت تعطي دايت اون لاين او تشتغل اون لاين في الويب سايت او تسوي جلسات تغذيه اون لاين لازم تدفع له 50 درهم قريب الى الملاوي هل هو لو ما دفع 1500 بدون بدايات من المعرض؟ بس في بدايات من هو بيسالني يعني هي بيحلوها على الماركت هو بيقول ماذا فعل؟ المبلغ المدفوع زائد على الماركت ما بعرف عن هيك في سو بيسالني لا 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 انا ايش رايك بالجوائز كل مخرجيه هو في كل البلدان ولا تختلف بين بلد واخر تاكيد اذا كان ما بتنطبق على الهيئه الا كان غير داخل الهيئه التهرب من الضريبه جائز والغرامه التي تفرضها الحكومه لو مسكتها كمان جائزه. فالتهرب من الضريبه باي طريقه يعني بشرط واحد هو عدم الكذب. لانه الكذب لما سئل النبي عليه الصلاه والسلام هل يسرق المؤمن؟ هل يزني المؤمن؟ قال قد يسرق قد يزني. سئل عن الكذب قال لا يجوز. خلينا حتى عدم الكذب، عدم الكذب له بدائل يسموها التوري يعني النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لما سئل بمعرفه بدوي سال واحد بدوي فساله هل شفت اصحاب النبي او شفت الرسول او شفت صريح للبدوي قال له انا ما بقول لكم مثل ديني فقال له اهلا بكم فهو صحيح انه يعني استعمال العبارات حتى لو كانت مكتوبه المبلغه غير الواضحه لكن التهرب من الضريبه جائز والغرامه اذا اذا نسكوب الضريبه والعقوبه ايضا جائزه ايوه <تصفيق> 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 <تصفيق>
So he uh, he claimed that his brother uh, is a thief and uh, he took him uh, as a, a, a punishment for the death and he slaved him. But from the beginning, he told him, uh, I mean, and I hope about that took place. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not going to slave you. From the beginning, he told him, uh, I'm your brother and I want to keep you here. So he, uh, Save you from what they were doing with him. So he took it, and the Quran says, He wouldn't be able to take uh, his brother, to keep his brother according to the law of the king. And the law of the king was, was wrong. The law of Wali al Amr is wrong. What do you do with a wrong law that uh, uh, Wali al Amr made it? Well, help to Wali al Amr. Professor, based on this uh, reasoning, uh, some of the scholars, the Hanafi scholars in India, they have given a fatwa that you can use the interest from your bank to pay the taxes to the government. Not based on this fatwa, no. That's a different thing. That's interest. Interest is this, not. So they say one one haram will offset the other haram. No, the tax no. is haram. The interest no, is haram. Is haram. <laughs> Haram can the haram cannot upset haram cannot upset haram by another haram. But uh, interest is not permissible even when you take it from a, an animal. It's not yeah, it cannot take interest. Because then there is no reality. There's nothing to back it. So by what virtue do you take interest? You are taking, that's why it's called uh, by, by the verse of Surah Al-Nisa, yeah. almost everybody, not almost, all commentators on the Quran said that this verse is about riba. Uh, that's a different issue, but uh, is when we deal with government, in interest, we don't need with them. What they say is, even in a current account in India, they give interest on you, even your current account. So, what do you do with that? Do you just leave it? Because somebody asked the 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 ones, the, the scholars, no, what do you leave? Don't leave it. So what do you leave? Do you take it and, and use it to, to pay the tax to the government? No, this is what they because the that the tax to the government is your obligation towards the law. You can escape it, try to escape it, but to, to use that money, you are disposing your own benefit. It means you are benefiting benefit from it. So you should not benefit from it because it's not yours. That's the, the point. So you give it to charity because you don't own it. It's not your money. Money that is not yours, but it is in your hand, and it is wrong to return it to the beginning. So the fatwa is very consistent. But it is enough. You can withdraw, and then you withdraw. Oh, rather, when you even, even if you are in India, when you open the account, you make a condition that I will take interest. So take the interest and give it to, and also give it to poor Muslims. Don't give it to any charity generally. Only to Muslim channels. With the intention of sawab, of keeping your own money pure and clean. And this is a tawab, different. But not as charity. And you don't pay the car from it, for instance. Like that. Okay, guys. They also say you can only use that to make toilet. There's also one thing that. If you withdraw the interest money, you cannot give it to the poor, but only use it for dirty things like making the toilet. Or not in your home. In your home, you are. No, no, for 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 the most, make toilet, yeah, toilet for the but most. Of that uh, yes, it is said that. I mean, it's not bad. But it is said. Yes.
I have just taken this fatwa from Pakistan to some family issue. There are you know, lots of funds of my brother. It was accumulated interest. So the fatwa was that you can give the interest not for the sabab purpose, just give it. And you know, to anybody, to anybody, but without, not to the blood relatives, not to the blood relatives, you can give to anybody, but with no intention of sabab, because the hukum of the taker and giver will not apply in this case. There is definitely the work for keeping your own money clean. Uh, that's the, the but point. Now, we're keeping with you. You are keeping your money clean. So there is a tawab that yeah, that's we know. Yeah. But basically, and the fatwa, the general fatwa that is known, is to give it to Muslim charity. Give it to Muslim poor and needy. Yes, brother. So there is a, sh a short argument like effects of financialization. Uh, created options under the claims of need for uh, for hedging, but then we bought that options create wealth, so we traded them. So this is the argument. Well, they destroy wealth. So we created in, the, uh, in this indices to help us understand the market behavior. But I can say it in this is yes. But then we thought that in indices create wealth, so we traded them. So this is also well they destroy wealth. They said uh, we created sh uh, short sale under the claim of uh, facilitating, facilitating sorry trade and diffusing risk. But we thought they create uh, wealth, so we traded them. They destroy wealth. So we created uh, commodity futures under the claim of helping farmers sell their crops. But then we thought uh, future contracts created wealth, so we traded them. So it's also is cause of trade destroy the wealth. So another one, uh, we, we traded shares, commodities, and currencies to enhance investment. But we then noticed that we really do not care about trade, service provision, or investment, and thought of share trading only as an opportunity to grab the wealth of others. So we speculate, speculated, and created speculative tools such as CFDs, uh, CFDs, and beating instead of trading on shares, commodities, and currencies. They also destroy a big difference yeah, between betting and beating. Yes, beat, beat, <laughs> betting. Sorry. Uh, so, Professor, are you saying it's not uh, allowed to trade shares or what? I said it's not allowed to speculate shares. It's not allowed to speculate to make. It's not allowed to speculate this. It's not allowed to speculate houses. But, but it's allowed. It represents a real asset. Yeah, real asset. You buy a real asset and you buy real asset for what purpose? For the increase in their price or for their return or for both. So you wait until both is done. And uh, to, to tame this, I think is the only issue is to force extension in the period. There is no other way other than forcing extension for the period. The other one is we need to exchange currencies to help international trade, but we then thought that currencies created wealth. So we traded currencies on the internet and web, bet, uh, web and we bet on currencies price changes. We thought that risk creates wealth, so we traded insurance, insurance derivative, and created uh, and credit derivatives. Risk does not create wealth. Is is a uh, like comment? Risk does not create wealth. Properly uh, risk does not create wealth properly does well here again trading risk destroying wealth. Does yes, wealth. yes. We also uh, the last one uh, we also traded debts thinking that debts create uh, create wealth. So we securitized debts and turned them into new uh, assets that we sold and traded everywhere. Well, debt and uh, debt trading do not create wealth, rather they pull down even uh, remote investment institutions. So what is the wrong? The most serious problem is a uh, uh, persistent and in intensive misorientation of the finance sector by a confusing, confusing its sport and service function with wealth creation function. Uh, assignment of incorrect tasks to finance uh, resulted in resource diversion, 
wealth transfer gambling cost in uh, wealth uh, transfer gambling cause insta instability corruption type profiteering benefit uh, behavior so this is now especially for in, in your presentation screen you need to be careful we gave different definitions of uh, finance and financial but which one of these de definitions that is relevant to the role of finance so you need to make another slide for selecting the definition that is relevant and see what has happened because here the deviation from that function is what caused the problem. It is not wrong. And here is the, uh, the argument for Islamic finance that it's not wrong to pool financial resources and give them to the deficit union. But what is wrong is to uh, take this away, extend it to areas that are not justified. This extension to areas that are not justified, I think this is what is wrong. By the same token, I argue, and the same argument is also given by Najat philosophy uh, that uh, uh, creation of money in the banking system itself is not wrong, and uh, it's okay. But what is wrong is the exaggeration by enhancing, by using it in the wrong way. So need for paradigm change. Financial reforms that we call for, we need finance that supports the real economy. Number one, uh, sports of uh, sports, food production, uh, planting, manufacturing, SMEs, new ventures, etc. Not finance that exploits it, uh, supplants it and destroy it. That point number second is about we need a finance sector that helps rather than disturbs, dis disorders and distracts and divert resources. We need to go back to basics, redirect finance to make it play a sportive role and redivert financial and human resources out of speculation and back into wealth creating activities. We need a finance sector that facilitates uh, channeling funds to the productive sectors instead of pulling fund into speculation. Regulation and supervision are important. But much more essential is what are we going to regulate and supervise? Are we going to regulate CFDs, internet currencies, trading and debt and derivatives securitization? So I think this was the, the essential uh, deficiency of the reform that was done at the time in 2010, at the time of uh, Obama. Uh, really, can be, uh, we only put more conditions on options instead of restricting options really by restricting their trading. So you don't have these trillions uh, allocated for option trading. Countering financializations call for multifaceted agenda. Restores policy control over financial markets. Challenging the new liberal economic policy paradigm encouraged by financialization makes cooperation uh, responsive to interest of stakeholders other than just financial markets, reforms the political process so as to diminish the uh, influence of cooperation and wealthy elites. So we need to reform the rules of the game in finance. Like rule number one, you can uh, earn only if you own an assets that creates wealth. Number one. Number second is no fake assets and no fake transactions. And the number la, th third is morally based screen of assets and transactions. Thank you. It's Thank you. And, uh, and human being again, on these three principles, I think we can. I don't think it is difficult to agree on these three. Yes, they are reasonable and fair, aren't they? That if you want to learn, you have to own yes. an asset that yes. generates earnings. Yes. And that uh, we should really remove these uh, fake assets and fake transactions, including Bitcoin. Um, and the third one is we, uh, we remove the those that earn instead of benefit. What's that? What is the benefit of producing? 
uh, liquor and producing tobacco at the time that science confirmed that liquor is harmful and tobacco is harmful. Let alone the economic effect of each issue. If you take one company and see what is the economic effect of liquor, how much resources are used in it, financial and other, and how much harm or how much resources are used to collect the herbs that is done by alcohol, whether in the body of the person or in the body of other people, body and property of other people who are affected by them, both uh, tobacco and the amount of resources. Suppose all these are used to be food, uh, I'm sure there will be no food for uh, professor, you uh, yeah. uh, so from uh, this team of paradigm shift. Sorry for sitting here and I'm like, okay. That's my <laughs> from the team of this paradigm shift, uh, are we reaching the West to come to us or this is to whom it may concern? And then the West. We are talking about science, science of finance. So this is not a misapproach. We are asking the West to adopt this. We are asking everybody it's not in a science that they should adopt this. They should ask, what is the model you have? What is the real model we have to show to them? This is the, our real model is based on the. This is theory. They will say that, you know, the West is progressing. They have thousands, you know, arguments uh, in favor of the derivatives. They are saying derivative is beautiful. No, I mean, and, and, and many, many, maybe more now in the West who think derivatives are really uh, weapons of mass destruction. But the, the, the real model they have is like US, UK, Germany, Netherlands. They are saying this is the model based on all these things which you are saying. No, it's not. Yeah, the internet and the communication is not uh, based on, on derivatives. Rather, derivatives are based on them. Uh, you can have internet and uh, progress and uh, uh, industry and then they, uh, uh, in the coming few years also you eliminate streets in cities because uh, uh, cars will be flying at the low Local and you know, so you don't need really all, all the, this and without uh, even the work on the uh, sun energy and all that, but uh, that, that 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 doesn't that's not based on derivatives, nor on options, is it? So if we if we add some Muslim countries like Malaysia, Qatar, Pakistan, others in this, and we say that to whom it may concern, a fair answer. So it will be for all because we are also not following this particular. What do you mean? What do you mean by add the country? Add, add them to what? You know, sir, like rule number one, rule number two, three, or something we are, you know, seeing against the, the transactions which are not clear. But what we are doing as a Muslim majority country, is there any model which are you know, which we can show to the West that this is basically based on, you know, the Islamic norms. Yeah, yeah, a model can only be presented if it is actually implemented. Do you think these are all the models we study in, in, in economics and in finance and in uh, throughout history? Only models that we have already practiced are presented. But if it's not already practiced, you cannot present. You can't, not, cannot talk about it. Are you are you suggesting that? No, no, sir. There's theory or philosophical approach. There is practical implication of that. There is a difference between these two. I don't agree no, on this distance. No, I think the distance is only in the mind of the people. Because in reality, uh, in, in many aspects of these theories are actually practiced. Somewhere or or, or, in, or another. For instance, uh, uh, Singapore was able to tame speculation in housing after the crisis of the United States. 
and was able by simply creating a law that you cannot sell a house if you buy it within the, the last six months. And uh, of course, we can make uh, tools which are e easy to to to, have, to get to handle these transfer of payment between the persons, transfer of a price, registration of the uh, the, the house, uh, making uh, some restrictions on the brokers and so on and so forth. So you can implement that. There are tools to implement it, and it succeeded in implementing it. And it uh, tamed really the speculation on the house that house prices did not go up in that fast as they were going. So, uh, I mean, the idea uh, uh, it, it can be done. And all what is suggesting now, at this, at this level, we are suggesting principle to, to, to go by. So, and based on this principle, of course, there are ideas that go more details. But uh, the argument that when it is implemented, it's not implemented anywhere in the world. Does it mean that we don't talk about the thing? So the argument of the West, you know, uh, against all these things, the difficulties which, which we are preaching to them. I don't think, I think the argument, this argument is in your mind, not in the West. <laughs> yeah, because we believe with people in the West, they answer us in the same language that we deal with. They don't say, oh, no, you cannot talk about that unless you show me it is implemented in one country. And if it's not implemented in one country, then you cannot talk about it. No one, I haven't heard this kind of argument, except, except from people like you in, in the Muslim countries who are already defeated in their hearts. Sorry, why, why the West is not, not following these things? These are, you know, because you did not tell them that. Did you tell them that? Did you tell them that? Even after going pages, you will just tell them that. These are not given them a practical model. That this is based on these things. You did you tell, did they were they informed of that? Did you write to them? Did you tell so them? They, about they, they are saying our own things which you are considering is fair. They are beautiful and we are progressing. We are catching. Why do you need these? What would be our argument? They are saying we are beautiful, we are happy. Blue eyes, lockdown is beautiful. That's what they say. No, they say we are living in horrible situations. We have crisis after crisis. That's what they say. It's not we who say that. They, they say that. And uh, please, we really have to look for any solution to reduce these crises and their effects on people. They will ask and they me. are complaining, they are noticing the, the high uh, wealth concentration <coughs> and the increase of inequality in, in their own society. Everybody talks about it. Yeah. Now, except the defeated ones in our country, who say they are beautiful and we are uh, uh, we are home and we come up to them until uh, uh, we, we have only one one choice to follow what they have done and uh, go into their path where they are clothed only and shape our beard and, uh, but we have the, the same, same issues even bigger issues than them hmm? we are we, we have you know bigger issues than them our economies when you are not I don't. No, no, no. Not personally. You have. No, you have. <laughs> have you seen? 56 Islamic countries, you know, what do we need to teach to the Do you leave any of these countries? Do you leave the, any of these countries? No, 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 no. Then <laughs> If you don't leave any of these countries, then shut And do you have access to Portugal? Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Get me an appointment with him to talk to him tomorrow. Okay. So, I mean, this kind of argument is only a defeated argument, not really an argument that, uh, oh, why Muslim? We know Muslim countries are bad for We know they are only still in the colonial box. Yes. So, we, uh, we know that. And uh, of course, yeah, he, Mustafa Kamil of Egypt was one of the uh, nationalists in, in, in the last, early last century. 
the early 1900s. He said, well, there is, there is nothing more honor and more greed than helping defeated people raise up, get out of their defeat. So this is great to, to, to help them. So we are working in that direction, inshallah. Yeah. And definitely we will succeed. Had the Palestinians were defeated from yani, in, in that mentality, oh, Muslim world is, is wrong and nobody is helping us, they would have died already. But now rather they are increasing. And now there are gaining more voices everywhere in the world that people are, are seeing uh, that the dilemma that is uh, created by the colonialist approach in uh, Palestine. And it's, of course, Palestine is colonized by that. It's one of the remnants of the old col uh, co uh, colonies that were created by the West. Why should Nixon, in, in 1967, was it or 73, make a, 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 an air bridge to supply arms to Israel uh, day and night, 24 hours continuum? Because they were about to be defeated. But sometime will come when they will be defeated. Don't worry about that. I am sure. confident. It may not be in my lifetime. I hope it will be in your lifetime. Sure. But if you are defeated, it will be in your children's lifetime. Yes. Maybe you something. Make me a leader, then I'll do what this is. Because of all, all that you said, you don't deserve to be a leader. Right? <laughs> so let's, let's go to the other uh, issue. Now we have uh, this discussion. Yeah. I, have, I have two questions. Yes, please. Yeah, the first question is uh, we discussed this time on the So we understand the importance of the Why was the global market affected? I mean, why was the impact global, not just in the United States? Well, basically, at that time, the exposure is taken by every investor in the US market. The, the funds from the gold market, the funds from the capital market, they are start flowing into the subprime mortgages. People start buying their assets. People are uh, uh, giving uh, bank deposits so that they can earn good money. When the divorce started, it got a bigger effect on everything. Yeah. Why did it affect Europe and uh, other countries? Because if I'm a European, I, I withdraw my money from the Europe. I liquidated my gold reserve. I liquidated my uh, shares. And invested in America? And invested in America. In this stock market. In some sub market. Take the whole world and invested in this. The market. whole world has contributed to that. And then it was affected because they, they made losses, they made the profit. <laughs> And so, when the financial market was more affected in America, it will help its financing to the real market production. So, they started laying off uh, workers and reducing production, and that had an effect, of course, on the international market, obviously, in, in more than one channel. The least of it is the channel of export and import, but the financial channel is more important also. Even, even the people in UK, they start selling their property and they start investing in US properties. Yeah. The, 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 the property market, the sub, oversupply, the fall of the property prices over there, and the same thing yeah. happened. The effect was uh, yeah. global. Uh, and it was observed then that Islamic banks were least affected. Why they were least affected? Because they did not trade. Really Debts because they will not uh, uh, trade uh, uh, because it's supplying um, a crisis. It's a debt crisis, really. So they did not trade debts, and they were affected indirectly by customers who failed to make payment to them because they failed in other areas because they were dual customers here and there. The second question about the, the Bitcoin. You mentioned that. It is also fake transaction, like, but but how, how is it different to a fiat currency? I mean, just because the government is backing it, it makes it real. Uh, is, is that what gives it real? Uh, real? Yes, yes. In fact, 
that yet alone is sufficient for that good that gives protection of everybody or for everybody now if you deal with it now those who deal with it they accept it fine but if something happens they will be about for themselves and it happened more than once this crisis now the bitcoin is gaining report on the report from 38 to 34 000. but the reason but the reason are announcement of authority now by uh, russia 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 they are making up one one uh, one digital one currency cryptocurrency mm -hmm. they have brought up but they are they were dealing that currency so that give a just to the cryptocurrency so mm -hmm. they, those people who accept it <laughs> yes between them it is in fact a de facto currency but when you go outside them or when someone has some problem with in it and where is the protection where is the that i have uh, uh, 10 bitcoins and i can force someone to accept them it's not a legal tender yeah. so that's it yes however uh, for example in gaza strip in Palestine, they are collecting uh, donation uh, for uh, ethnic resistance and us do bitcoin and do these things is this can be or not. Collecting donation means that I ask Hassan to pay dollar to, uh, uh, to buy the Bitcoin and the Bitcoin is transferred without anybody knowing. But how do we transfer it then? Transfer it to, to Hamas. Hamas is a military, uh, what is considered what the terrorist organization by the Taliban. Then, uh, how can Hamas transform that Bitcoin again into dollar? Because Hamas wants weapon or wants food, doesn't want and doesn't want Bitcoin. How can it transfer it again into a dollar again? So this transfer, he transferring his uh, dollar or my dollar into Bitcoin in order to can I the control. But they will Prof, the can I speak about this? Meta wallets, from meta wallets, it will be going to different assets, and those assets will be certain currencies. But how does it reach then? Does it? Yeah. So the the transaction will happen. They can exchange it uh, with wallet. The like that Russia uh, or Hamas uses uh, that out of the control of both the Egyptians and the uh, Israelis. So, uh, in the same way, the, the kind of uh, smuggled uh, weapons or food or other. Okay. So, what is wrong with that? It's only in, uh, temporarily to escape uh, those controls. Financial restrictions. Yeah. So there's another thing. My brother was in the uh, central bank in Palestine. However, because we are, we didn't take identify and recognize it from the UN and from uh, all world. We don't have uh, our special currency. Mm -hmm. uh, so they are planning to uh, uh, issue. Uh, Palestine coin, which is cryptocurrency, and it's, it will be controlled by the government. So, and protected by the government. Yes, that's it. It's a legal tender. <laughs> All of us say that if any central bank adopted uh, a cryptocurrency or issued a cryptocurrency so that it becomes legal tender, then we accept it as, as a currency of that country. But I don't think they can do that anyway. The Palestinians and so on, I don't think they, they couldn't be able to do it. Because they won't be allowed anyway in the international market. They have to go to the international market and they cannot do that. Unless uh, they go through what is it? What's his name? This man who to to America. Yeah. 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 No, the other one, the, the defector. The, the one who defected from uh, 
from the back and 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 so yes, well, there is many things in the underground. All the dealers work on in the underground and transfer funds from one place to another in the underground. But uh, they cannot come above the ground. Unless down by the government, a formal government. Okay. Say it. What the other is? Shmahi. Similar. Sami Gabinis was talking like something. It was easy to, I think so. So Sammy is still with us, right? Yes, yes, I okay. still with you. I, I, uh, I uh, would say uh, with the uh, cryptocurrency, they uh, they can exchange it to wallet. Then uh, we can uh, connect the wallet with bank account and uh, make it as a money. Yeah, when you do that. Yeah, give me a note. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Go ahead, smile. Yeah, but now we'll discuss the paper of okay. uh, uh, Hussein Askari. Okay. Today uh, we will discuss the paper of Hussein Askari. Uh, Askari was a professor, Iranian professor, of, uh, at uh, George Washington University. Uh, international uh, Business and International Affairs Department. Uh, he was written an article named uh, Several Financial Crises and Fundamental Reforms, the Benefits of Risk Sharing. Uh, he wrote his article uh, after, uh, before him, I mean, there were uh, many authors uh, who was blamed financial crisis. I mean, why financial crisis occurred? But they, they are good that uh, the reason or the, the, the root causes that uh, financial crisis happened was about debt contracts, huge debt contracts, and how uh, excessive, how yani, run up uh, of house price debts. Um, these authors was, uh, well, they were, uh, uh, I remember, as I remember, Mian and Sufi, they were wrote an article uh, in 2014. They published they, a book. Published a book, yes. So, I published a book and they claim it a يعني, financial crisis يعني, because of debt contracts. They say uh, in order to avoid protection, uh, avoid a future, another uh, uh, financial crisis, uh, such as uh, uh, يعني, 2007 and 8, in order to be avoided, he recommended and he suggested uh, to shift from conventional economics into Islamic finance. And he wrote an article, The Benefits of Risk Share. In his article, he briefly discussed several points uh, in order to provide some background of uh, risk share and uh, Islamic finance background. He wrote, uh, he discussed general discuss, general consideration of risks. What are the risks and what are the types of risks and how can we, uh, these risks be mitigated? So he discussed a general consideration of risks, the foundation of Islamic finance. He also discussed what's foundation of Islamic finance. Uh, he discussed the structure of Islamic banking. What are the structures of Islamic banking? the stability of Islamic financial system and the implementation and adoption of uh, risk sharing and Islamic finance. So he discussed these points uh, more detail, but I will try to summarize يعني, uh, يعني, from these points يعني, more يعني, in bullet points. Firstly, he describes uh, um, risk uh, into two types. He said uh, risk uh, may be uh, classified in systematic risk, what we call systematic systematic risk, uh, ideocentric risk, he said. So what's systematic risk? Systematic risk he divided, uh, he says, uh, the, 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 he, he, divided, he described it as a market risk. It's a market risk or and and of undiversifiable risk he said um, he said 
these are two types of risks that human experience. Uh, the first one is the risk posed by general economic conditions. I mean the systematic risk. He said systematic risk is posed by general economic conditions, which influenced by macroeconomic factors such as economic growth, uh, fiscal and monetary policies, and other macroeconomic elements like interest and inflation. On the other hand, yani he said idiosyncratic risk is uh, individual le or firm level. It's individual or firm level, for example, uh, he said this is a unique risk to a person or to a, com to a company, specific person or a specific uh, company. OK, so he also discussed about how uh, this risk is being reduced. Firstly, yani when we want to reduce systematic risk, yani we have to uh, focus on these policies, yani the government policies, for example, fiscal policies, monetary policies, managing these policies, and start, yani, yani fixing these policies, and uh, control yani macroeconomic variables. He said, uh, and he said, yani this. Uh, systematic risk cannot be insurable. It's not insurable. We cannot put into insurance because of its macroeconomic and related variable. But the individual risk or what he said, idiosyncratic risk, is insurable. Because for me, I face some risk, life insurance, for example. I can put my risk into life insurance. Is this uh, yeah, reasonable? Do you see it's reasonable? And if someone defaults, and we know the the background of of default is uh, is the macro conditions, but uh, that is uh, that default was not insurable. How do you determine in the in advance what risk caused what? Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, of course, when you when you insure credit. Uh, that you are giving to your customers as a banker. And if all your credits are insured, uh, does the insurance discriminate when a, a, a risk happens, actually a peril uh, takes place, uh, then the, this is caused by uh, systemic, then we don't pay. This is caused by uh, individual, then we pay. Uh, is that really reasonable? Or this is, uh, come on, yeah, uh, uh, Shah, this is a non practical this, uh, 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 categorization of risk, non practical. Because when it comes to insurance, you can't say this is not insurable. Yes, it is not insurable. I cannot insure uh, my ability to make profit. Because that may be sometimes because of individual default or could be sometimes very often also because of the general conditions or macro conditions of the economy. Yes, well, this, uh, although it may be by the individual default, but my ability to make profit or potentiality of making loss, this is not insurable because generally it is defined as related to the general conditions, which is not insurable, to the first category of systemic risk. Uh, yet, when you talk about it from risk point of view, when we define risk in, and study risk, what kind of risk is insurable and what kind of risk that is not insurable? We say that anything that relates to action that is not in your hand, is really insurable, whether it is natural thing, that what they call it act of God, uh, or including that, for instance, or uh, whether it is uh, systemic uh, caused by the macro conditions, but it is insurable as long as it is not done by you. You are not affecting it and you, you are not uh, yani part of creating it. Uh, so it is insurable. Then yeah, I mean, uh, to make the claim, oh, this is insurable and that is not insurable, I think is not appropriate claim and doesn't uh, does not apply, uh, does not reflect 
the reality of insurability. The reality of insurability is that anything is insurable as long as it is not uh, the, the act that you do or that you affect, your action affects. Uh, and even some of what your action affects is insurable, like car accidents. Bro, can I, uh, can I, uh, even, uh, uh, I mean, only when it is purely intentional, then it is not. But it is my action who did not make, uh, did not put my uh, foot on the brake and I put it instead of the gas. A famous case where about 13 people were killed in, in Los Angeles. Uh, an old man, and I am, I am old man, I don't deny that. And I abstained from driving two years ago. I told them, Halas, I resigned from driving. I don't want to drive. I don't touch a, a, a steering wheel anymore. And even inside the house, I don't touch it. And in the garage, when you take, take the car outside the garage, I told them, no, I don't want to take it out. You take it out. So the, my wife still drives. <laughs> my wife is eight years younger than me, so she still feels OK for driving. I don't. So that, that case in Los Angeles where uh, he put his foot on the, uh, on the gas instead of putting it on the brake, and uh, went on the sidewalk and killed about 13 people. It was famous in Los Angeles. But uh, and even that is action by him, not action and intended by mistake by him, yet action. And it is insurable. So this this, this and yeah, it's okay. I mean, take it as chat. Don't don't say I need give it attention. Second. That uh, this uh, categorization of risk. Just take it as chat. Mm -hmm. Okay. Second, uh, People can see what about you. He yeah. discussed uh, what he said, uh, the foundation of Islamic finance. But this is dangerous here. What are the foundations of Islamic finance? As he said, Islamic, uh, the foundations of Islamic finance, he mentioned two pillars. One is uh, interest to prohibition and interest to bearing debt. It's one, one pillar. Another is 100 uh, reserve, 100 percent reserve in money depository bank system and equity Based investment bank. So he said, "This is uh, these are foundations of Islamic funds." Okay, take them at three now, not two. Prohibition of riba, prohibition of interest, uh, hundred percent reserves, equity sharing. And I don't buy all all three of them as matter of fact. The first one is negative. It cannot be a foundation. A negative statement cannot be a foundation of anything. Because you need something positive to tell me what is it based on. I mean, exactly, you know the story, right? Of uh, the the wolf who did not eat Sayyidina Yusuf. So he said, well, I, I killed a wolf as big as the wolf who ate Sayyidina Yusuf. But then the other guy told him, but Sayyidina Yusuf was not eaten by a wolf. He said, then I killed a wolf as big as the wolf who did not Eat Sayyidina Yusuf. How many are these wolves? Yani, uh, all wolves in the world did not eat Sayyidina Yusuf. So, so you cannot define a thing by what it is not. That is an important, and it is a rule of uh, uh, logic. You cannot define a thing by what it is not. So Mr. Askari, you are 100% wrong. I, I said that anyway in a lecture. Oh, it was online. In, in the same school in, 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 in George Washington uh, University because I was invited to give a lecture. I gave in fact two, three lectures on in, uh, at different times in the same when I was in Qatar by a Professor Naqshbandi, who is a colleague of Askari in the same school, a school of business. So I, uh, I thought well, that cannot be and you cannot define things by what it is not. So this is one. Two, uh, the 100% uh, reserves. Why 100% reserves? This is so much opinionated that makes banks are not banks and they are something, uh, something, some, some different species, not really banks what, uh, the way we know them. And uh, most of us write on Islamic economics 
find the invention of banks and banking idea a very useful invention. It was not done by Muslims and they have influenced economies, all economies practically they have influenced them. It's very useful invention. The wrong in it is, uh, and I, I, I personally, and this is only mine, I believe that it is the, uh, the curse of the starting point. The starting point was, we mentioned here, betrayal of depositors. Depositors, Sarrafin in the 1500s, uh, started betraying depositors by behind their back, giving loans from their money, the money of the depositors, and earning money on that. But they took deposit on the basis of the classical deposit, which is don't touch it, safekeeping only. So if it is safekeeping only, you cannot. And that is a betrayal. This curse, in my opinion, continued with the conventional banks, with the Western banks until today. And that created all these crises. So in, in the, the wrong in it, not the idea of financing or creating of money. These are two beautiful ideas. The wrong in it is the financing through debt. And debt does not create assets. Now, to replace the first premise that he did, that Islamic finance is based on prohibition of interest, Islamic finance is based on property ownership. You own a property that is able to generate increment, and then you can profit from that. You can make profit. You can use that property for financing. Now, this property could be a share in a project through sharing or, or, or any sharing contract, or could be an asset that you lease, or could be an asset that you sell at higher than its cost. So they, then it is property based. And if you want to take details, it is <coughs> sale or leasing or sharing based. <coughs> can be advisories, can be uh, service. Okay. <laughs> The property can be a service, of course. An airline ticket is a property. Is a, a service can be a property. This is one beautiful thing in our Sharia that we treat a service as a full-fledged property. We apply on it all the requirement or all conditions. We granted all characteristics of a property. Of course, keeping in mind its nature. The definition of service that it usually takes time. It is a factor of time. So when we say uh, utility of a, a property, utility of a computer of, or of a car, utility of the car is not an, uh, a, a, a stagnant item. It's an item through time. You say utility per hour, utility per day, utility per month, whatever it is, it's a factor of time. And that's what uh, some people confused it with interest and said haram. It's not haram. Yani as long as there is a real thing produced. Interest, there is no real thing that is produced. Here there is a real thing, which is the manfa'a, the benefit that you derive, the utility of it. So a service, yes, is a full-fledged property keeping its nature as a service. Therefore, uh, for instance, you can sell a service before you take possession of it. Notice, you cannot sell uh, a property before you take possession, but you can take a service because what's the meaning of taking possession of a service? You can only take possession of a service by consuming it, by exhausting it. When I have when I can claim I have taken full service of the car rental for a week, I can I took possession of it only after I use it. And before I use it, I didn't uh, take possession of it yet. So yeah, I can sell it without taking possession. That is, uh, it applies on, on physical things and their lives, 
but doesn't apply on a service. OK, so here then premise number one, Islamic finance is property based property that generate increment. Uh, premise number one, no invention of banks is very beautiful. What is wrong with them is that they, they went in the wrong direction by basing their transactions on uh, lending on debts. We take debts as deposits and we give debts also as financing. Now, basing them on debts is wrong because debts do not produce uh, increments. So the second premise is also we rejected Mr. Askari, and uh, I said that in that lecture, in fact. And the third premise that it should be sharing only. Well, sharing only, we are depriving consumers like you and me from getting finance. Why? Why depriving me? And why preventing banks from giving me finance? It has to be sharing. Yani. If I want the, the finance for marriage, for instance, to make uh, marriage reception, so the bank will share with me. And uh, it's it's not uh, reasonable to uh, and it's further that will limit banks to only one area of activity, which is financing businesses Business. and uh, bearing uh, profit and loss with them while I as a depositor, I don't like to bear the, that uh, profit and loss of the market. Why should I, should you impose on me as a depositor that I have to bear market risk? I don't want it. I don't like it. You are risking my property. So I don't like to put deposit with you, mister. If all your activities is uh, financing on uh, equity sharing, I don't like to put deposit. You may, you may find different kind of banks, really, not the banks as we know them. But the banks as we know them are uh, beautiful. So we really don't want to, we, we, are, we want to hold on to them. We don't want really to remove them and get some different kind of species. So the third premise, premise is also incomplete uh, on, and contains some contradiction because later on you will say Murabaha and uh, and, and Mudaraba. Well, Murabaha doesn't work unless on, on, on the basis of owning property. So if it is Murabaha and Mudaraba, then why are you saying uh, sharing? It's not sharing then. So that's. Uh, okay. uh, Tadli, yeah. he uh, mentioned the structure of Islamic banking. He put a two column, uh, two, he categorized two types of uh, Islamic banking. Number one, uh, depository, money depository. He, he called uh, money, money depository banks. He said uh, these banks just only they deposit the, the money or the, the reserve, what we call gold, silver, cash. They all, they all in all, they have they have to deposit the cash or the depositors money uh, without lending any any or without financing any project. For example, and they charge fees. Yeah, and also they charge fees. Yeah. Uh, to maintain their operation. So the only yeah, chop. The, 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 so why do we need it? They keep your money in your pocket. Why? Why? They are safe. Yeah, they, they, they keep yeah, an amanat just, and yeah. they charge fee because of keeping this amanat. Why do we need Number these kind two. of of, of institutions? Yeah, I mean, they will cost the society unnecessarily. Really. Extra burden. Yeah. <clears throat> You know how old women used to where where old women used to uh, uh, keep their money. My mother used to do that <laughs> here. Yes. The other column put uh, he put uh, investment bank. He said investment bank. So keep it with your bank, mother. Uh, this type of banking has no monetary role. He said has no monetary role. Just the, they keep uh, the international and domestic saving. Uh, for uh, uh, and domestic saving, and then they uh, invest this uh, saving into productable or uh, productable investment, such as murabaha, uh, mudaraba, normal business. You say. But this is, in my opinion, I, I like this idea really. It's a good way of investment, but we have to give more also, uh, yeah, more ways. To, uh, to be able to use it uh, with more facilities. For instance, 
today many mutual funds in America have the right to issue checks. Uh, are you guys aware of that? Yani as simple as uh, Amana. Amana is one of these funds, and this is the one that follows the Sharia requirement. I am uh, I, I've been invested with uh, investing with Amana for the last maybe 30 years, 35 years since it was established in the late 70s, more than 40 years now. And my account with them, I can withdraw checks on it. So I can write any kind of checks that I want to anybody. And their checks go to the settlement uh, chamber like other uh, banks. So the check, yani, I'll give it say, to a supplier of mine, he'll put it in his bank and uh, the bank will take it to the settlement chamber. It will be uh, settled through the banking settlement uh, methodology um, on daily basis. Yani. So it is uh, really this facility. The other thing, there may be needs for financing other than uh, yani investing in shares of companies. Mutual funds can share, buy shares in companies. What do you do with these needs of financing that are other than these? I need financing to buy a desk at home and I pay it within three months. Who's going to give me this kind of financing? Is it what, what uh, people like us study in Australia? This is a social agreement contract. You go to your friends and family and neighbors to buy the table. Uh, let let the banks and the investment funds focus on the production and any consumption needs. You go to your family members, friends. But, but the reality is that is not sufficient. I need this. Many of the Mashaya say that also. Yani, but this is in reality is not sufficient. That is why. OIC Fiqh Academy, for instance, uh, added another idea, which is very reasonable. Yes, that is the idea for of creating waqf, cash waqf funds, creating waqf funds for the purpose of giving uh, shorter term loans. And uh, yes, that is that is a good idea, and YC Fiqh Academy uh, yani suggested that. In fact, I put that condition, that suggestion in the decision of the YC, because I was in uh, the uh, committee that uh, drafted the resolutions. Okay, so uh, not only I believe in that, yani, several other people also uh, believed in that idea with us when we were in the drafting committee. So the uh, we need social institutions that provide that, but even with that, that is not sufficient because there are cases where what you need is larger than that and what you need, maybe even uh, yani, it, it creates kind of some kind of profit also, not in necessarily in business, I mean, even in personal lives. So you are willing to, to pay for it. To, to, to take it for profit. These, I think we need for them, banking activities. Banking activities that are based on murabaha, on ijara, uh, and on, on sharing. Uh, yani naturally, we, uh, and you have many of these, like uh, microfinance and the small, medium and small and micro enterprises, their needs sometimes are short term. It's not a matter of, of shares where mutual funds that work with uh, sharing can go in. You need shorter than that and with special situations for them that suits their situations uh, that vary. In other words, definitely there is no society that live without debts. You need in any society debts. And for debts, you need institutions that provide uh, financing on debt basis. And this is where we, we believe in a form of Islamic banks, the way they exist today, 
although Islamic banks kind of uh, drifted a little in their focus and also in their in some of their instruments drifted from the basic principles need to be corrected no doubt about that okay fourthly the stability of islamic financial system he discussed it, يعني, this section that, and he mentioned that welcome uh, johan you came online financial system much more uh, stable assalamu alaikum yes sir salam I mean, Islamic financial system is much okay, more stable well. than conventional banks. And he argued, he, argued, he supported his argument, three main points. He said the widespread application of risk sharing contracts and the prohibition of interest bearing uh, loans eliminate the potential default and minimize the chances of major financial crisis. Number one. Number two, uh, he said. He, 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 uh, yeah, he said two conclusions, two main, two key conclusions. He said there is an equilibrium with no interest bearing assets, and the system is that shock resistant. The rate of return to capital in Islamic financial system is determined by the rate of return to the ownership position, to the equity position, as a function of marginal product of capital and the portfolio. Balance equilibrium. He said, since there is no interest in Islamic system, and so there is a real rate of capital attached to the product or real real sector of, of, of business. So, and there is demand and supply, and for real economy. So this may and uh, suck يعني, the volatility of or the badness of interest rate. So he argued that there is a real rate of return because of it attached with business directly, yani equity or whatever, the financing real economy. Overall, he also uh, argued that financial sector, Islamic economy, serve uh, to support the actual sector. He said financial assets are contingent claims that are based on risk and return sharing. So, I mean, she uh, supports his argument, uh, as I mentioned, at this point. See, the issue of risk again, I mean, I don't want to take risk. Why do you want to, I mean, when you claim that Islamic should be risk? Yani, that, that whole, yani, coming to the idea of risk, I don't see any reason that Islamic should be connected to risk taking. Yes. So that what it means, of course. But and and I think their problem stems from lack of distinction between property risk and market risk. This distinction is necessary. What kind of risk you are required to take? Property risk because you you are required to be an owner. If you don't own, you don't earn. So this is. Uh, uh, but uh, I I may own without taking market risk. I don't need to take market risk. So this is I think the okay. Finally, thank you. finally, finally, he said uh, the adoption uh, uh, adoption and implementation of risk sharing finance. In order to uh, adopt and implement risk sharing contracts, he, sh uh, he, he said we need four main uh, things. Number one, we need government financing. Government financing, for example, uh, and government sh should finance businesses. For example, government, if the government have more yeah, and revenue than its expenditure, and it uh, must be invest on a real economy, for example, or uh, buying yeah, the, um, risk sharing securities, for example. He, he detailed it, yeah, and he explained it, yeah, Shukuk. No, he, he, he lives before, before the age of Shukuk. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah. And he said financing. Uh, uh, financing business, business, government financing, because who's going to take the risk, yeah, and in, in the sense that is really unlimited, is only government can do that, not uh, private business. I don't want to take risk. 
and I want you, don't want you, Mr. Bank, to take risk with my deposit. So I'll uh, put my deposit in a safer way than taking this risk. So the government can uh, step and take all these kind of risks. Yes. yes, but if the government does, you, we all know that it's so easy to cheat government. And it's so easy also to create a corrupted government by uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the old Ibn Khaldun theory that government shouldn't make trade. This is the theory of Ibn Khaldun that government must not make any trade in the market because that creates corruption in the society. So it must not uh, leave trade to, to private sector. Uh, okay. Secondly, he said the conduct of monetary and fiscal policy with no debt instrument. He encouraged uh, that government policy, uh, monetary and fiscal policy without debt. Government should establish these policies without debt instrument. What do we mean? Uh, if the government uh, use this policy, should uh, and adopt it in a way that is not uh, embedded that only, does not only create sharing. it, yani only sharing it. Only, only sharing. sharing. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, promotion of risk sharing and public policy. And finally, the role of the state risk sharing and Islamic finance. He said, yani we need to implement these key, key figures, key points. Final, uh, my recommendation or my criti criticism in the, um, accord, uh, in my opinion, in the case of financial reforms, the author assumes uh, assumes that only loan based interest has been the root of causes of such severe financial crisis. However, there were other wide debt contributing factors, which he did not mention uh, clearly in his article, including speculation, uh, derivatives, and other uh, swap and option other options of uh, trading, not trading. Secondly, the author exaggerates risk sharing and 100% reserve banking as a piece of Islamic finance, which I'm not agree with him, but according to my knowledge, instead of this, he, he, sh he would, uh, he, he, he had better focus on an and ownership. Yeah, and yeah, actually, in my opinion, yeah. Ma'bad al-Jarhi thought more about his ideas before he put them in paper. Uh, Hussein Askari did not think about their implications, so he was hustling to putting them in paper. Well, this is Islamic and this is what, uh, what should be without really thinking in details about some of their consequences. So Ma'bad al-Jarhi, for instance, allows for debts in the society, allows for uh, Murabahant for uh, banks to do these, but then again he has some problems. That oh, what do you do if I want to make a deposit in the bank? Then he has serious problem. He has no answer really. Ma'bad al Jarhi do this. If I want to make a deposit in the bank, what do you what do you do? Uh, well, it becomes a serious problem here. And yeah, uh, thank you very much. Well, uh, there is a, the bank should take a risk sharing instrument and then should not take their risk, uh, rather there should be a sovereign guarantee from the government to take the risk. Is it, is yeah, the government should place the role of banks in taking the risk. And the government should make that financing, maybe that the government should accept deposits also. I don't know. What is the role of the bank? Yeah, I mean, he, he did not think clearly about implications of what he was saying, in, in my opinion. So he, he doesn't know yet. طيب شكرا يا جيحون and يا سامي. We'll see you Jeyhun in the afternoon, inshallah.